Okay, so we've just had the February session of the Legal Advocacy Club, and tonight we've covered the plea in mitigation. So I've watched some plea in mitigations tonight, and I'm going to deliver some feedback on what I've seen and some tips on how to perform this piece of advocacy. So the first thing I will say is that the plea mitigation is slightly different to other types of advocacy you might put, perform sort of in an academic uh, setting. So, for example, uh, it's quite different to mooting, whereby it's quite structured and you're sort of uh, focusing on legal arguments. Um, with the plea mitigation, uh, by comparison, you wouldn't start out with sort of a, a formal introduction, setting out the law, introducing yourself and saying within this plea mitigation, um, I think that's a, that's more for sort of mooting and things of that nature. Um, so there's no need to give an introduction and say, I'm going to deal with this point, this point and this point. One thing I would do at the start of the plea of mitigation, particularly with something like this, where your client has pleaded guilty, I would say start by setting that out and ask for the maximum amount of credit to be afforded to your client. And um, also one thing that I saw, which is quite helpful, is to tell the court within your opening what it is that you're looking for. So a number of people said, um, uh, within this plea of mitigation, I'll be seeking um or I'll be asking the court to sentence the defendant in line with the pre-sentence report. Um, so I'm telling the court from the outset what you're asking for, so they're in no doubt. So I think that that's always a, a really good way to start. So just dealing with some uh, general points of presentation um, to start with, um, as with, as with uh, most pieces of advocacy, all, all pieces of advocacy, I should say, um, a nice slow pace is what we're looking for. Keep it slow. It's easier for your bench or your judge to follow. It's easier for them to listen to what you're saying. It makes you seem like a much more calm, much more controlled advocate. And it also makes you uh, seem much more persuasive as well when you're talking in that slower manner. Also remember to take regular pauses as well. So if you're making an interesting or quite a substantial point, take that pause thereafter just to let the point uh, sink in. Now, with a case like this, uh, this is one where it's been pitched as a Category 1 offence, and quite frankly, it is a Category 1 offence. All the boxes were ticked, so there's no way of getting it outside of Category 1 uh, on the guidelines. So I wouldn't advise trying to challenge that at all, you know, trying to argue that, uh, you know, the, the defendant wasn't driving within a, a recent period of the disqualification being imposed or there wasn't excessive bad driving or anything like that, because the facts are the facts. There's no way of you getting around that. So you're stuck with the facts of the way that they are. So don't try and challenge the categorization. But what you need to do is you need to try and present that mitigation in a persuasive way. So try and explain to the court exactly what the reasoning for the offending was. Explain to the court that your client is uh, remorseful. And ultimately, uh, with, with a case like this, you need to explain the significance of the custodial sentence. You need to consider what phrases that you use as well um, within the um, uh, the plea mitigation. Don't over egg the pudding, as it were. So I was listening to one submission and it was a very good point that was made. Um, so within this uh, plea mitigation, the individual had said that uh, effectively the defendant was, had committed the offence because he needed to drive. He needed to make some money so they could, he could then go on and fund the course. That's fine to present it that way. Um, but this was prefaced with the phrase, this was a crime of economic necessity. Um, I wouldn't probably go that far with something like that, like that. So you need to think about the level at which you're pitching this uh, to the magistrates or to the judge. You don't want to over -egg the pudding and make your submission seem, uh, seem unreasonable. Um, also think about the, the, the structure in which you present the submissions as well. So with this one, ultimately your client doesn't want to go to prison. And the reason for that is because he knows if he gets the custodial sentence, there's a risk that he won't be able to um, then get on the course and go for the job or whatever it might be. Um, there was also, of course, the issue in relation to he um, uh, goes off and I think he uh, does some shopping for his nan occasionally. Now, that's obviously a point that, that, that that's sort of a peripheral satellite issue as to why he needs to stay out of prison. But ultimately, he needs to stay out for his own reasons so he can get on the course and further his career, etc. So think about the way you'd structure that. Focus on the main point first before looking at any sort of satellite issues. Focus on your strongest and your best points first. Also, uh, what I'd say is, you know, don't make up any facts either. So look at, have a real careful read of the factual matrix and don't try and 
uh, insert any additional facts that aren't there. You know, this is a case where the prosecution and the, the defence broadly agree on what's happened. A full guilty plea has been entered. So you want to present the case on that basis. You need to ensure that you're presenting the mitigation on the basis of your client's instructions and, of course, the facts uh, as they've been presented in court. And then just finally, we had uh, reference to uh, sort of community ties and things like that. Uh, these aren't really issues that you'd be thinking about so much with the plea mitigation. They factor more into the bail application. Um, so I would say just, just think carefully um, about uh, which points that you're actually putting into the plea mitigation. So uh, those are just some tips for the plea mitigation, and um, I've linked them to tonight's problem. So I hope that they've uh, those tips have been helpful for you.